Assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon. First of all, thank you for joining this webinar, Bite Size Blended Learning, Faculty of Engineering. My name is Hafiza Binti Abdul Halim Yun from Department of Chemical Engineering. So I'm as uh, e-learning coordinator in in this Faculty of Engineering. So if you have any problem with the Webex or you didn't hear uh, anything from me, just um, just inform to me from the chat box there. So move on. So basically on this webinar, there are several things uh, I would like to share. First of all, of course, introduction to ELIP and blended lending criteria. And getting started with ELIP, some of us are quite blur about what, what does the function of ELIP. And then online learning, we have two types of online learning here, which is synchronous and asynchronous. So we will um, discuss about this later. Ending, and then about adding resources. What kind of tools which are basically available in ELIP and what kind of ex external tools that we can use uh, as a resources? Then, and then we need to add activities there. So it's the same thing, what kind of av available ELIP tools and external tools that we can use. And then we're going for assessment. And of course, last part is about online teaching resources and guidelines. So basically, if you have um, uh, familiar with the uh, ELIP, there will be like right top corner. They will have like three star there. Sometimes you got one star. Sometimes you got no star. And if you are lucky, you have got three star there. What is basically about the star? So actually, the star indicates and um, to measure the quality of your blended learning practices by looking at the active participation of your student in activities that you have created. So what does it mean? Okay, there's like one, two and three stars there. With a minimum three activities and two assessments. Okay. Here, okay, you can see here activities there, three and there's two assessments, the minimum one. If you got one star, it means that minimum one participation for each activity and three submissions for each assessment it means that if you got like uh, three of your activities only one of your students participate for each activity okay and for your assessment at least there are three students submit their assignment although you already gave like for five activity, activities or assessments more than two, like for five of assessments, it doesn't mean that you've got one star. It depends on your student's response. If there is no student response, so it means that you will not get the star. So, okay, for the two stars, it means that at least 30% of your students, enrolled students, is has give a response in activities and assessments. If you have a 50 total students, it means like 30%, almost like 15 students, then you get two stars. If you got three stars, it means that at least 50 students, half of your students, has response or give feedback in your activities and assessments. So it means that most of your students give their response on all of your, uh, most of your activities and assessments. So here, then you see about the total of your resources. How many, how many did you need for, you can call as a blended learning criteria. For resources here, you can see there are seven. At least you provide seven resources. Seven resources. It means that 
maybe you can give them a files, folders, note, uh, also website link, your slide presentation. That is more about um, the resources there. Okay. Okay, I just, uh, I know my my voice is clear for you because I've got a response that my voice is not really clear. So, then about activities, we need to have at least three activities in our ELIP, the minimum one. So, what kind of example of activities is kind, uh, example is forum, journal, choice, database, workshop, everything. We will discuss it later and I'll, I'll try to explain the basic thing that we can do activities in ELIP. And then for assessment there, there are two, at least you need to provide two type of assessments. It's not two type, two, total of two assessment in your ELIP. For example, assignments, tenitin assignment or quiz. So, this 732 is a number, a special number that you need to have a blended learning criteria. If you have, uh, if you give like less resources like six, then you are unable to get the blended learning uh, achievement. Okay, then we're going for getting started with ELIP. Okay, when you open up your ELIP, okay, it's ELIP. Unimas.my here uh, on the left side you can see the navigation okay you can see navigation and you can see the list of your courses there and if you realize that under your navigation tab you can see there's an elite guide for course instruct instructor okay we, um, if you click there, okay, if you click there or you may scan the QR code which I've given uh, at the right side here or you can just click on this, um, the link here, Elip Guide for Instructors. Okay, it's okay, I will give the slideshow to you after this webinar. Okay, you may refer to it later. When you click on this uh, link, you will go for this page, Elite Guide for Course Instructors. And here, there are such, uh, can say there's so much of resources, guidelines, video tutorials on how you want to conduct uh, your Elite, how you want to um, include your assignment, your resources in Elite. So yeah, there's an elite guide to spice up your course. So there's you can see there's a how to add course resources and content, how to add course assessments, and how to add course activities. And then in there also you have another external tool: how to add Mentimeter in your forum, how to add Padlet in your course page, how to add YouTube as well in the, uh, in your uh, elite. There's a lot more and then for if you want to conduct your live class, there's a video tutorial how to use Zoom for live class teaching and how to use Google Hangouts or Flipgrid. Yeah, there's a much, much more in there. You may refer to it. Then here, okay, we're going to for online synchronous and asynchronous. Okay, in your ELIP as well, uh, I mean in the ELIP, uh, the guideline for instructor, there's a, there's a tab there saying that they have given you two options, how to do synchronous and how to do asynchronous. If you click on option one, okay, if you are uh, really interested, in doing the real time, I mean the synchronous one. Okay, you can click on there. And but before you you want to do a real time, you need to know that all students 
have strong internet co connection okay in our esc as well uh, from uh, webinar for power last time we need to have all we need to know all of our students have internet connection then you can continue your online teaching mode in synchronous in real time if one or two of your students didn't have internet connection uh, it is recommended not to do online i mean uh, synchronous teaching mode you may go for a synchronous teaching mode okay but if you sure that all of the students have the internet connection have a really good have a laptop as well i mean it's not laptop at least they have a device to use for their online and learning uh, online teaching and learning so you can proceed with that um, mode okay if you want to know more about synchronous you can click at the link which been given here https there they will give you a lot of a uh, guideline how uh, how to add what kind of tools it is suitable for online teaching mode but here i give you some example of live, live teaching tools okay if you want to proceed for live teaching tools there are several of examples here like zoom skype webex right now i'm using webex okay and microsoft teams and then you may also use uh, Facebook Live there if you are familiar uh, or really interested to use Facebook Live as a, as your teaching online teaching uh, platform or YouTube Live. Okay, but you need to remind to record your session. Okay, if you have if you use Zoom, Skype, Webex, and Microsoft Teams. There's a record button, so there's no problem with that. You can keep the record and you save you can save the record. But how about the Facebook Live and YouTube Live? Okay. Uh, if you want to record your session, you can use screencast omatic here. If you have yeah, if you if if there's no problem to record your uh, Facebook Live or YouTube Live, there's no problem as long as we can record our session. That's the important thing. So move on to the okay. This is an example of Elip Elip page. So if you have a if you are going for synchronous mode, make sure that you have a really clear instruction there. Live class sessions and just. Put the link there. So if the students want to join the class, it's it's kind of easy for the student just click on that link and directly going for your online class. Okay, so for option two, we're going for option two, which is asynchronous. Okay. Uh, personally, I really recommend it for all of us to use asynchronous low bandwidth access. Because we know that some of our students have a internet problems, so basically, at least we we don't burden the student. At least they have uh, their own time and when they want to uh, to do the online online uh, learning. So, if you want to have a tips on how to use uh, how to do asynchronous, there's a link there as well. I've given the link below that. So what kind of recorded teaching tools for asynchronous? Because asynchronous is, is not live streaming, so we need to have a recorded teaching tools. So first of all, the easiest one would be a PowerPoint recording. Okay. So uh, maybe okay, PowerPoint recording. We have uh, at the bottom there. Uh, Rakam Slide Besta Suara. Actually, this one is prepared by Chua Kiman. Okay. Uh, he has already gave a video tutorial. He gave a video tutorial on one by one, I mean step by step on how to do PowerPoint recording. So online audio recording, if you don't want to use a PowerPoint, sometimes if you are Sometimes, for example, 
you want to give like PDF documents there. But from PDF documents, you need to have more explanation on like example, uh, something about your um, expert, I mean your equations, how to use the equations. So you need to have more explanations. So use the online voice recorder. So this one, okay, for example, I give you All right, online voice recorder. Okay. I just give you a, a brief on how is uh, online voice recorder looks like. So here, it's simple. It's online there. Just click the button to start the recording, and then done. Something like this. okay. Hello, my name is Hafiza. Uh, thank you for attending this webinar. So, stop. So, you have this audio recorder. So, save it. Okay. And then it's been saved in your laptop. Okay. So, basically, it's easier. So, we move on on this one. Okay. That is about online audio recording. About whiteboarding teaching if you have been used zoom or like microsoft teams uh, and this webex there's a whiteboard there that you could use to explain or to scribble up uh, some things so how about if you want to use to do asynchronous what kind of tools that you can use for whiteboarding so actually they have whiteboarding teaching the name of the apps is explain everything yeah, click on here. Okay, so we open for explain everything. So it's free. You can sign it for free. Mm, let's see, hopefully it's not take for a long time here. Okay, you can sign it with your Google email address. Okay, so we we are in explain everything. If you want to start your whiteboard here, you just click the new project. Okay. Okay, so maybe as a simple thing, you just can start with a blank whiteboard, just white. For me, it's really useful for those who want to explain like equations. Uh, maybe you can, okay, maybe join. Then you can record as well this whiteboard, okay. Yeah, you can record it with your if you want to mute your mic you want to start recording okay uh, for example you start your recording there then you want to scribble up like okay okay what is this equations uh, maybe like this one y equal to mx plus t something like that for example a simple thing okay so for those, this one is really good if you have like, uh, you're using tablet, so it's uh, rather than you use mouse, it's really hard to write up using your mouse. So it's good if you have um, something when you want, something is basically like face to face that we've been uh, using before, just write uh, on the whiteboard and then explain what are the things you want to say. So after you have explained everything, like, okay, this is the important things, blah, 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 and blah, then you can stop your recording there. Okay. After you stop it, uh, you, okay, uh, I've been, uh, okay, uh, Dr. Daniel has asked me, Unimas Langan Whiteboard, uh, 
uh, no, actually, we must not on whiteboard. So, if you want to upgrade your whiteboard, you need yes, you need to pay some. Okay. So we just try to use whatever is free for now. Okay. So here, okay. Okay. If you want to share the link, okay, because it's it will be safe in this um, this uh, platform. Explain everything. If you want to share, you can click share here. Okay. And create web video link. Okay. Or here. Mm, okay. You can share here. So you can provide the link. Okay. Stream the recording. Okay. No. Okay. That's an example for upgrade your plan. Okay. Here you can see this one. The link. So you can copy it. And you can put it in your elite. Mm. Okay, so that's basically for the whiteboard. So we move on. Okay, as usual, we are really excited and uh, excited to have uh, this online video on the, or, or online recorded. So sometimes we we didn't realize that our document, our video have a really large size. So if you want to put it on the elip, okay, it will be no problem on that. But uh, I can say for students who want to access it, uh, it's really a burden for them because it depends on the data. So my suggestion is, okay, my suggestion is make sure your file size is not too large. If not, like PDF. Maybe you want to convert your um, your slide presentation into PDF, and if you think your slide presentation like hundred of uh, slides there, maybe you would like to think to cut it into small pieces, okay? Or if you want to compress it using a small PDF here, okay? Online PDF compressor. If not, um. That's, that's for the PDF. But if you want to compress your video, we can use Clidio. Okay. So, try to... Maybe I can try to open this small PDF. Okay. All right. If you see your chat right now, okay, uh, IR Rudy, IR Rudy has shared the link of Chua Kiman's about of uh, online teaching and the link tools. So maybe you would like to see there are several of them. There's a lot of them, but I just share you just a simple apps or online tools that we can use. Okay, here we are in the small PDF website. So you can choose your file here, just drop it, and then compress it into a small size. So how about the Clidio? Okay. Alright, so Clidio. Okay. Simple thing. Just choose your file, your video file. And then compress it. So right now, I didn't have any example in my laptop. So it's simple. It's a direct forward instruction. So uh, it's, it will it will not be a problem. That's the basically for the recorded teaching tools. Okay. So if you want to see much details and more details about the video tutorials there, uh, I have provided um, the whiteboarding and the videos, how to use explain everything. So now moving on, okay, this, this is example of asynchronous online mode, or asynchronous mode uh, in Elip. So make sure you state it clearly. Okay, this is, uh, I mean, you need to have like 
introduction there what is this okay so you provide the resources so you provide the activity okay after this we will uh, explain more uh, i will try to explain more about activity and the quiz okay, this is uh, one of example assessment so don't don't forget to record student attendance um, if you have realized that our uh, en uh, our uh, dr nodiana timbalan dikan in timbalan dikan academy actually we need to record our students attendance as well so how we want to record for synchronous online so if you want to do live streaming you need to have you need to do like general qr code attendance okay so go uh, you can go to you, our, uh, my class if you're familiar with my class then click on it this is example okay then you go to the website there and at the bottom of your web page you can see the qr class attendance click on that and let the students scan the, uh, the QR code to ensure they are attend our class. Okay, something like um, our webinar uh, at the beginning of our webinar. I just uh, show you the QR code for the attendance. But how about the asynchronous mode? So for asynchronous, it's recommended to do manually. Okay, how to do manually based on the students' feedback and participation in activities. If you, it means that you need to give the instructions in your activities. Make sure that the students at least give their response in order for us to record their attendance. Okay, it's kind of there's a lot of work to do. Um, if you have like hundred of students, so you need to check one by one. But yeah, that's the on. I mean, that's uh, my suggestion. Okay, how to record students' attendance if you do asynchronous mode? Okay. Okay, we are going for adding resources, elip tools, and external tools. Okay, so there's a lot of uh, there's a lot there's a lot type of resources which are available in Elip tools, but I give you several of examples that I can see it's easy for us to use. So there are four of them: file, level, page, and URL. Okay, uh, there's a guideline as well at the at the right side there. I give the link how to add file and documents. But okay, I will show you in, in my ELIP okay, after this on how to add files and documents. Okay. Okay, if you uh, come actually have gave an email to us in how to up, it's not direct upload because it mentioned that don't upload the video file directly to ELIP. Okay. Just embed the video link. Sometimes, because the ellipse right now is like too too, all of us are really make use the ellipse. Uh, the ellipse kind of we are afraid like ellipse or like it's too much in ellipse. So it's better not to upload it directly. Just give the link. So there are two methods here. If you use online streaming sites like uh, Facebook Live or YouTube Live there. Maybe you don't need to upload your video in the ELIP. You just give the link to uh, your video of your YouTube or your Facebook Live and then link it to your ELIP course page. Okay, after this, I'll give, some, uh, I'll give the example how to link it. So if method two, like if, if most of our lecture are doing asynchronous mode, which is not live, you want to uh, please don't upload your slide presentation or if if your slide presentation is not is not a big size for me it's okay but if it's like more than three uh, three gig five gig there that's a lot 
a lot of space is being used in the elite. It's better to link, okay, to link your document into your elite course page. Okay, first of all, you need to upload how to link it because it's not live. So of course, you need to upload your video or your documents, any documents in your cloud storage, for example, OneDrive or Google Drive. Okay. So copy, okay, this is the example. Okay, if you go for your, okay, copy link here and use the label and URL. So I'll give you an example how to use the Google, and not the Google, the OneDrive. Okay, right now I'm going back to first of all if if you want uh, if people doesn't know how to open where's the where's the one drive okay open your email and then at the right top uh, at the left top corner there there's a like nine nine dots there just click on it and you can see your one drive here just click the one drive If you click your OneDrive, here you have your cloud storage. You can copy your document and upload it in your OneDrive storage here. So here, if you want to link it, okay, basically, this is for example as uh, my course, okay, mass balance here, okay, like lecture notes, something like that, okay. If you want, where's, where, where do you want to get the link? When you scroll to your slide here, the three dots here, just click on it. So you can see here it's copy link. So copy the link, okay, click on the copy link, okay, links copy. But sometimes I want to double check, I just click again the copy. So then go to your course page in an elite course page, okay. Uh, okay, for example, okay, for example, here in your uh, elite course page here, first of all, okay, turn editing on, just turn it on, and use level, go down here, add an activity or resource, okay, just click on it. For example, I use label. Okay, here under resources, you can use label. Okay, use label here, add on it. Okay, use label and then paste it. Paste. Okay. Okay, paste it. Sometimes it's too much here. Okay, I, I give you an example. If we just click save and return to course, okay, save it. You will see it's like it shows it like HTTPS, you must my share, blah, blah blah. It's too long here. So if you want to make it more uh, like more clear, more simple, okay, you can edit it again. Okay, here you might to use it like for example um, about okay unit one introduction oh. introduction maybe you want to put it as an like introduction to mass um, Okay, so highlight on it, okay, and put it the link. Where's the link again? Okay, you can see here link. Click on the link, and then uh, 
just copy a uh, paste paste the link that you have copied in your OneDrive. So create link. Okay, so actually if you click this one, okay, so I just basically remove it. So try to save it first. Okay. Okay. So if you so it's much uh, nice to see instead of the lengthy word. You just see uh, unit one introduction to mass learning. Okay. So if we want to click here, basically going to to do directly going to our slide presentation. Okay. So it means that when you use a label, it will open up uh, another website to your which is your OneDrive, okay? So that's one if you want to use level, okay? So, and then we are, okay, all right. So I would like to recommend you not to upload directly your resources directly to the edit. It's better to use the link. Okay, it's it's much better. So we're moving to the okay, so here's kind of, here is the example. Make sure you are uh, uh, again Make sure you give a really specific, really clear instructions like okay, unit one, okay, this is the notes, uh, this is uh, the website you can use for additional resources, and this is uh, another resources for assignment you need to do, you need to summarize. So it's it's kind of example, at least you have a plan what to do in your edit course page. Okay, so we move on to adding activities. Okay, how to add activities using elite tools or external tools? Okay, there are there's a lot of activities available in elite tools, but I just give you uh, several uh, just really really simple activities. So chat, feedback, forum here. Okay, if you want to know more about how to to create a forum i give i also give you the link down here the video tutorial okay uh, maybe okay okay something like okay we're going to the external tools okay, there's a lot of apps there wooklab padlet mentimeter or kahoot okay so I give you example like um, okay, Mentimeter. You can see here, it's kind of interactive, uh, attractive apps here. Uh, maybe you can use it at the beginning of your session. Okay, uh, maybe you can use it. You can ask a really simple question: What do you know about mass balance? Okay, so it means that the bigger the words is, that's uh, a lot of response give the same answer. Okay, Kahoot is also uh, in attractive uh, activities. It's a simple thing. It's like a quiz. So, but this one is much. Is it will be useful for synchronous mode, okay, on uh, live streaming because it needs to be, it needs to be um, the activities will need to be done in real time. So I will give you example Padlet. How to use Padlet and how to link the Padlet in our Elite course page. Okay, so going back to okay, so the, the Padlet. Okay, here is one of example of my Padlet. I've been using it before this, so it's it's free. But I'm not so sure. Do we need to upgrade it? Because there's there's a button there. It's upgrade. 
So for example, um, I use an activities in my class and put it is how, what can you do with your food scraps? Can you convert it into energy? Just please give suggestions and your opinion about that. So the students will give their opinions. It's really simple. You just put the ad poster, then type it. So I think, um, I think uh, food scrap, I think waste, food waste can be a good alternative to convert energy. This done. So it basically it's simple there. But how you want to link this padlet into your elite course page. So here you there's a share here you can click on it. Okay. Then you can copy link to the clipboard. It's the same thing. So it shows here copy padlet URL to your clipboard. Going back again to your elite course page. So add it again. So maybe you can put it for example here. Um, maybe you can put it as URL or label. Mm, okay. Maybe you could put a URL. This one you put it as energy resource, for example. Make sure you put it as make sure it's activity. Okay, so the student would know this thing is an activity. So they need to give a response. So then save and return to code to course. So here is link. Okay, put it, if we click on it, it will open another window here. Then, yes, the student can go for it and write their opinions. So basically, this ELIP course, ELIP web page, is a platform for you to, to put all of your documents, all of your sources, all of activities in one place. So students will not like um, jump, pening -pening. where to find your resources, where to find the activities. Just put it in one platform and the link and then you just put the link there if you want to do external tools. So that's for Padlet. So I really, uh, my opinion, I really, you, uh, I really uh, suggest you to use Padlet if you want to, to do external tools because it's easier and simple. So move on to okay, move on okay um, in Padlet also um, yes you can share the link and video materials yes true so okay, this one is Padlet. Here you can say that if you create external tools like Padlet, then you can choose the link uh, as been shown earlier. So put it. Uh, make make sure you put a really clear uh, label there. Activity. Okay, what what kind of activity there? Or another option is embed embed it on main course page using label. Okay. This option two here, okay, for example, here I will show you after this again. Uh, okay, so okay, I just show you, it's more easier. What is embed? What is different things about embed and link the link it to the elite course page? Okay, so here we go again to our padlet. The energy from Biomass again. 
Here you can see it. Okay. Click on uh, let me share. Okay. Either you put a click share or the three dot here is the same thing. Okay. Click share. There's an option yet embed in your blog or your website. So click on it. This is the code uh, to embed in your ellipse course page. So you copy it. Copy. Okay. Once it's in copy to your clipboard, then go to your course web page. Course ellipse course course. So here, try to add again. Okay. Put it. Okay. Maybe you want to use level. Okay, if you want to embed it, make sure you click this HTML icon. Okay, click on it and then paste. Alright, so maybe you want to click it again, then you can see how it will be appear in your ellipse course page. Okay. So save and return to course. Okay, let's see how does it looks like. Okay, so you can see the difference between if you want to use as a link and if you want to use as embed. Okay, in embed you can see yeah, uh, it's kind of interesting. It's kind of colorful there, but I can say if you want to use embed like this one is you can see everything is put under the ellipse, ellipse page so sometimes if if the padlet there's a problem in padlet so in ellipse course page there will always be loading 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 and there's can say a huge amount of internet will be used so it is recommended if you put just a link you can use embed but not all, just one or two activities to make sure, it's not to make sure, just to make your elite course page more attractive. Okay. So that's basically the difference about if you link it or you embed it into your uh, course page. So we're going to the next slide. Okay, so basically this, this is the same thing. Uh, as I've been, uh, as I show you earlier. So there's adding Padlet embed codes to Moodle. Moodle is actually our unit. Uh, this uh, video tutorial by Chua Kim Man as well. So we're going to adding assessment. Okay, ellipse tools and external tools. Okay. Okay, for, for assessment tools, okay. What, what are the available? There's a lot of available elite tools, but the simple thing you just use assignment or quiz or Turnitin assignment. Turnitin is actually a plagiarism checking. You can use it if you want, you if you ask your students to write a report. Of course, you want to check whether they are really do it or just copy from other uh, resources. Okay, so uh, on the right hand side here, I give you several links okay, how to how to use um, or how to add assignments how to add in time quiz or randomize the questions in quiz but i i i, I just want to um, remind you again if you want to do a quiz of course you need to make sure that all of your students are able to uh, access uh, or have the internet connection okay have a good internet connections uh, if you want to do a time quiz because sometimes there's you know there's students have a problem uh, some some of the times they didn't have the internet but the other day uh, on the next day they will have really good internet access connection so make sure you need to double check again your students uh, whether you can use this quiz
these tools uh, for your assignment, so for your assessment. But again, I want to remind you about if you want to do a quiz, maybe for final examination, you want to use quiz tool, try to do it, uh, try to do MOOC quiz first. Okay, at least the students aware what they are dealing about because maybe it's their first time to do quiz in ELEP. So it's better try to do a MOOC quiz first. Let the students familiar about it and let yourself as well familiar how to deal with the quiz. Sometimes uh, you didn't know that maybe you are uh, thirsty like pandang, something you are uh, something about like that, you need to do a MOOC quiz so you at least you know what's the problem and how you want to deal about it on the next quiz or maybe in your final examinations. Okay, so there's a lot of um, types of questions you, that you can use in ELIP, like multiple choice, matching, select missing word, drag and drop, true or false, short answer, essay, numerical, embed media such as images, audio or video as part of the questions. So if you want to do a simple quiz, you can do as multiple choice, but uh, I can I can say that maybe most of us are really um, do um, really like or prefer to do essay or short answer because we have a lot of analytic uh, and we can say this about more about discussions. So I can show you on how to do quiz in Ellip. Okay. Okay. Quiz in Elip here. Okay. Add an activity or resource. Okay, as usual. Then under activities here, you can see quiz. Okay, click on quiz and add. Okay, maybe you can say it's a quiz one, for example. Quiz one. So here, the timing, you can um, set up the timing if you want, okay, if you want to open, when do you want to open your quiz okay, or when do you want to close your quiz, okay, maybe you want to open it right, uh, right after this and you want to, if you want to close it or the students will, will not be able to see the quiz after one hour, okay. This, okay, so students are able to view the quiz like one hour. But if you don't want, maybe because as you know, there's a um, limited of internet connection, maybe you want to do like 24 hours tomorrow, okay. The quiz is available for one whole day, but you will need to, to do the time limit. How many, uh, how long students are allowed to do the quiz? Maybe like 30 minutes. Once they open it, okay, once they open it, uh, 30 minutes they are able to answer the quiz. Uh, then, okay, when time expires, okay, the quiz will automatically submitted. So let it be like, like this one. It's, it's suggested to be like this. Okay. So, okay, going for grade here. Okay, nothing to do but grade. So, about layout, if you want to put it five question in a page, so you can do it if you want to use like 10 question in one page. So, it, it depends on you. So, I mean, I, I love to have like five questions in a page, so it's not too crowded in one page. So question behavior, if you want to shuffle the questions, okay, you can do it, shuffle. This one, uh, like each of the students will have a different questions, okay? I mean different of, uh, I mean the, what you can, uh, what, what you call like, okay, the number one, 
the numbers are reshuffle. Maybe the students A, the number one question, will have a different question compared to the other students, student B. So it's kind of, uh, it's, it's, I can say, at least there's um, uh, my sugya, one of the way we, we don't want to have, we don't want the students like copy and paste, uh, like talk, like copying the other, the other students because maybe they might, they might um, message or texting their friends. Okay, what is the answer? Question number one. So this one is, is I'm not saying we, uh, we using, if you're using the shuffle, we will eliminate the copy activities copy paste uh, the copy answer activities it just try to minimize it okay so let's let's the questions been shuffled so i guess that's all for the settings for the quiz so you can save it and return to the course okay when you done setting up your quiz okay okay Okay, click on the quiz that you have created. The question is not set up. So edit the quiz here. Okay, so if you have already uh, edited the quiz, click add. Okay, if you have a question from bank, you just uh, use it. If not, you just create a new question. So there you go. There's a lot of type of question in the quiz here. Maybe I try for like, essay questions okay just add it okay the questions maybe you put it q1 maybe describe about yourself for example but about yourself so there's a lot of things they they need to explain uh, so here Okay, requires the student to enter the text input box. Now you can limit your uh, students. Uh, I mean the content of your student. If you want, if you want them to have a really short and simple words, you can put it five lines. But if the question requires a lot of explanation, description, maybe you can put a lot of more lines there. Okay. So if you want to them to allow attachment, if anything uh, you need them to attach, there's a, okay, there's a choice options here. So save it, save changes. So there will be one question here. So I'll try to add under the questions. Mm, let's see the multiple choice here. Okay, question name is Q2. Okay, uh, I would like to inform that using quiz, there's no sub, sub questions, just one, two, three. So there's no sub questions. So we just one, two, three. If you want to put a sub question, maybe you just put it like 1.2, something like that. Okay, but there's not related, there's no interlink between the uh, questions. So maybe um, even number, choose, maybe choose even number. Okay, you put here, you can choose it. Uh, if you want to have a multiple answer, you can choose multiple answer. If you, just, if you want to allow only one answer, just put only one answer. So choice one, maybe I put like three. So there's no grade. Okay, there's no marks for that. So mm, four, four is even number. I put it hundred percent there. So one, so it's none. So it's a change. Then you can see you have uh, two questions here. So going back to your quiz, Quiz one, and you can preview your quiz. Okay, start attempt. Okay, so you, this is how your students will look at your quiz. Describe about yourself, and you can describe my name is Matana. Okay, and then, okay, 
and then this one is this like you can see it's already shuffled because if you remember I put B is for number four but right now C is number four so I put it like C finish at time okay so answer is C then yes that's it how you want to use uh, how you want to do the quiz tools in Helix okay we're going to okay external tools we're going back to the slide presentation um i can see here uh, can we use this as test also yes for quiz you can use this as test yeah no problem with that okay as long as uh, you know when you want to open your test and when you want to close it and then uh, yeah it's simple like that so about if you want to use external tools for assessment okay maybe if you want to um, if you like students to have like youtube presentation okay maybe um and again don't just don't put uh, uh, if you put like assignments here okay please don't uh, don't make students to give it full video in the assignments just give the link okay and Padlet as well. Uh, Padlet is the same thing as we did it before, but using different of uh, tools. For example, at the beginning, okay, at the beginning, Padlet we use for as an activity, okay, activity in energy resources. We use as label. Or we use as URL okay but for assignments okay for assignments we can using the same padlet as well but we use different of tools under resources it's not activity uh, it's not uh, activity anymore it's under assignment here um, so, okay sorry yeah up here but as assignment again can put it assignment one so here is assignment one okay recorded or recorded presentation you want to, to do that or and then description just uh, please give your link your link uh, and so on okay so here you can put it okay there's a uh, also there's when you want to allow the submission and when is the deadline if you want to do a synchronous or uh, not a real time you can put it as much as a week okay open it for a week and if you want to do it um in like live I'm not so sure if you want to do live, you want to do it one or two days. It's shorter time uh, compared to asynchronous. So submission types here. Yeah. Okay, if you want to allow fast submission, yes, you want to allow. But here you are strictly say just give the links. So the submission types would be like online types. Okay, you can tick both of them. But if you really instruct them to use, uh, to give just uh, the link, just click um, not you will not click the file submission submission just use the online text but if you want to use uh, to just, if you want the students to submit their file yes you may click but again there's a uh, there will be a lot of uh, files in your e course so my suggestion is just uh, make the students give their links and then you can go uh, to their website by clicking their links okay so save and return to course so here okay in your assignment here so since there's no students have been submitted so actually the students will give their links uh, into your assignment something 
Okay, something like this one. Okay, so here are the example that I showed you. So it's the same thing as well. So the students just give the links. So like Padlet, that we use Padlet, maybe the instruction is, okay, please upload your uh, or link your recorded, uh, uh, recorded videos in the Padlet. So basically, you just go to the Padlet and you can see all of your students uh, assignments is is at the at the padlet. So for online teaching resources, okay. Actually, Calm has provided a lot of online teaching resources. There's a, a list, yeah. There's a list of online teaching resources which been share uh, from from other university as well. So you can click on here. Okay, actually, it's in the yeah let me show you in the elip ins instruction elip guideline to instructors going back to your elip page so here elip guide for course instructors you can see here there's a lot of resources and under here, you can see there's a compendium of online teaching resources. Okay, so you can click here. So you will have the list. The list is, I can say, it's more about like 200 plus. So you can make use of it. You can search for any of the tools uh, you are interested in. Actually, we we have gave the link for you to view, for you to learn how they uh, how you want to use the tools. So yeah, there's a lot. So basically, uh, you don't have to be afraid if you are thinking that you don't have enough resources. Everything is here in under elite guideline for instructors. So again, yeah, this one which I've been mentioned earlier, COVID-19 response, online teaching tips. Okay, you can go uh, to this uh, link to get know more about it. So yes, you need to take time to explore each one of them. So, okay, okay, this one I've been uh, introduced to you, the online learning and blended learning and uni master teaching that line All right. so yes it's also under elip guideline for instructors so you just go for the elip guideline for instructors and you've got a lot of information at there okay let's see okay so I guess that's all for me. If you have any question or suggestions, you can click uh, or mute, unmute your button there. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of open for discussion. If you have any suggestion to to do online teaching and learning, okay. Let's see. Let's see. Chat first. For, for the manual attendance, I will key in right after this. Okay, do we still have to tell come manually that we are using the software? Uh, do you mean the external tools, uh, Dr. Daniel? And they have to yeah, yeah, the external tools. Mm -hmm. All right, so they have to check manually the participation from the students to be able to be counted as BL. Okay, uh, yes, if you as as has been mentioned, like uh, if you use external tools, this is uh, like a uh, disadvantage as, as using external tools. The comp didn't know how many students are participate in that external tools. So in that case, uh, maybe your star like 
supposedly you get three stars and because of there's the come didn't didn't know didn't detect how to calculate your it's not calculate cannot determine your um, students participation so yes you need to um, inform to the com and saying that uh, okay uh, i have uh, used these tools as my activities so may you check my uh, uh, participation of my students uh, something like that so yes uh, the the unit the com unit will, will try to double check again with you okay so 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 meaning uh, the way how com check is not the access the web page of your elite course but they are using some other method is it because if they access our elite page they should be able to see that we're using the external uh, yes. That's it. yes uh the com actually the com uh, can uh, can know that what what kind of tools you are doing uh, i mean what you are uh, what are you doing right now but they didn't know how much of participation that's it yeah but sometimes um sometimes for example uh maybe like padlet right uh, uh yes actually that's it so you need to inform them again Yes, it's it's kind of tedious, but yeah, that's that's how it works. Okay, let's see another one. Mm. For okay, for a video file, what is your recommendation on putting in on lead page? Should we embed the video or just provide a link for the file that is uploaded to an external sources? Okay, I guess uh, it's been I think uh, explained about this. Uh, for uh, as a recommendation, it's better to put the link, uh, which is uploaded to an external sources like YouTube or Padlet or your OneDrive, so it's not too much uh, files or too much documents. Uh, in your elip. Okay. Uh, and all right. So, is there any questions? Um, I might open up again the QR code for those who uh, want to. Scan the QR code. Right. So yes, it's like okay, it's like five more minutes, I guess should be okay if you have any questions or problems with your ellipse or maybe you are really blur how to conduct your online learning um, just uh, uh, feel free to contact me email me and I'll try my best to give uh, to give a suggestion to you okay uh, and are you sharing the recording of this yes I will share this recording once it's been published because it takes some time to uh, to to make sure everything is okay to be downloaded uh, and okay so uh, if, if if I'm if you want to speak maybe because I I'm from chemical engineering maybe we have a, like the different of uh, back I mean the criteria of assessment something like that maybe you can ask your representative of elite representative in each on each of your departments like for mechanical engineering department is you can ask uh, from dr magdalene and for civil engineering you can ask uh, mr abdul azim and for electrical engineering you can ask uh, for uh, dr yanwar they are really really helpful uh, in terms of this uh, showing you and help you for this online teaching and learning if if there's no questions okay um 
Okay, I would like to end the webinar, but yes, uh, just who, who wants, whoever wants to scan the QR code, just scan it first. Okay, thank you so much for attending the webinar. Hopefully, the information and the guideline uh, really help you in to prepare this online teaching and learning. Okay, if you have any problems, again, just uh, contact me via email or yes, just you can call me whenever you want. Okay, try I really, really uh, gladly to help you uh, in terms for preparing this online teaching and learning because. It's, it's kind of, we, we will start at like 9 June. So hopefully we will be prepared before that. Okay. Thank you so much and selamat berbuka puasa.